Uh, hi, good morning, everyone. Good to see many familiar faces and new faces. Hope you all had a, a good night last night and you'll have an even better day today. Uh, so as Leah said, I'm here to talk about, well, what else? Uh, AI, uh, but more specifically, how this can transform our industry, so the travel industry and create new experience for the travelers and new opportunities for, uh, our, for our ecosystem. So I'm gonna, in order to do that, we're gonna do this in three parts. First, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how Google is thinking about um, AI in the context of Google Search. Then we're gonna um, look into some consumer trends and the ever-changing and evolving expectations that travelers ha have when they come to our products. And finally, how we bring the two things together. So how we're using uh, the power of AI to create new experience for our travelers and new opportunities for our partners. Hope this sounds good to everybody. All right. Let's get going. So first of all, our mission at Google remains the same. We want to organize the world's information and make it universally useful and accessible. Uh, the way we're doing this actually changes, though, with AI. In the past, we're very much focused on, you know, at search creating new experiences, uh, um, uh, fulfilling richer content. Now, uh, with AI, this can mean something drastically different. Uh, there are new ways to organize information, and users actually have a very, very high expectation of how to consume it and how to discover this information. Um, in the age of AI, what we see is that users have new reasons to come to Google. People find themselves coming to Google to ask new questions, right, uh, and tackle new problems in ways, ways they have not done in the past. You may find this stat behind me hard to believe, right? But 15% of daily searches that we see at Google have never been searched before. Let this sink in for a minute. If nothing else, this, this tells us that A, human curiosity is boundless, but also we go and ask questions and try to find out about things in many, many different ways, right? And catering to this user demand and this user expectation is what we're aspiring to do. Let's talk a little bit about the, the how. So first of all, um, we, want to, we cannot achieve the success without our foundation. And you see three elements here. Uh, first, our AI models and quality systems. We want to continue to provide the reliance and accuracy that are central to user trust, especially in the era of Gen AI. Secondly, more and more, we want to connect users directly with creators or the human voices they actually crave. And this is very, very important. In the era of Gen AI, we don't want people to just give a summary of what's out there, right? We want to offer them a starting point and then let them connect with the creators, the influences, the forums, right, that they actually want to go deeper with. Third, and you know, very, very important with everyone in, the, in this room, we want to continue working with our vibrant uh, partner ecosystem. Accurate and fresh content is more relevant than ever before, especially now that we have new ways to consume it and explore it. So let's talk about this a little bit more, right? We don't believe in a world where AI is a replacement for everything or AI replaces the web. We believe in a world that combines the capabilities of AI with a thriving partner ecosystem with everyone benefits. So we want users, right, to be able to have more relevant and useful results, and as a result, our partners to get more traffic. Let's talk a little bit more about um, users and their expectations. Um, every year, we publish um, a report about Google search uh, trends, so what people looked for, what people searched um, in, in, in the year before. It's very interesting. It's uh, fascinating sometimes. I encourage you all uh, to download it, take a look. But I want to talk a little bit about the trends that are more specific to this audience and this group. So when it comes to, um, uh, to travel, what we have seen in the past years is that consumers care about experiences in ways they actually have not uh, cared before. Um, there are many reasons for that, right? Partly the pandemic, uh, making us appreciate exploration and connection with the community, partly purchasing decisions, but we also see that users get, uh, users get much more specific uh, about what they want and what they're looking for, right? So restaurants near me has been a query that's been a classic at Google for a long time. But we've seen in, in 2024, uh, it's a much more specific version of it, which was kind of nice aesthetic restaurants near me, right, experience triple-digit growth. Similarly, we've seen lots of queries that are related to travel, like how do I renew my passport, or very specific local queries like uh, horseback riding in Las Vegas, right? So we see people actually look for very, very uh, specific and tailored uh, travel experiences. And what we typically see with respect to people uh, searching, 
translates to actual spending. Uh, and this is kind of data from the US, um, but this, these trends actually apply, uh, apply um, a, a globally. We see that basically when it comes to discretionary spending, leisure, activities, travel uh, remains top of the, uh, you know, top of the list. Uh, and finally, right, as consumers decide where to travel next, where to stay, what activity to do, they take pride in being very open-minded and willing to try new things. Again, you see some interesting statistics. 60% are open to trying new options, right? Uh, on average, they consider 6.7 brands when making uh, decisions, right? And they consider even more brands than in the past. So, so as to recap what we see in terms of uh, traveler and consumer trends here and expectations. Consumers are very invested in travel experiences, they're willing to spend a lot of money, and they care deeply about the choices they're about to make. And, they, and in order to do that, they gather information from multiple sources and platforms. And this sounds kind of great, right? But as I'm sure most of us can also attest from personal experience, this can be quite overwhelming, right? Um, we, have we see complex user needs, um, and fulfilling those can be quite challenging or painful when we make this final booking decision and commit uh, to a very expensive trip or, or a high-end experience, right? And some of the elements that make it um, very, very hard is, first of all, inspiration, right? It's the other side of the coin of being open-minded. It's hard to decide where to go when we see that three out of five people actually start and, don't, and be, are very open-minded about this destination, or three out of four are very open-minded about, are very open about the dates that they, can, that they are willing to travel. It's hard to collaborate with friends and families when planning those trips. It's hard to make budgeting decisions and see what the actual spend is, which sometimes may be a good thing, right? Uh, when you make decisions across different time windows, right, the flight, the hotel, the activities, etc., and then, of course, when you want to go back and pick it up uh, with respect to planning. You see another interesting statistic from our research, uh, which is kind of mind-blowing, right? If you think about this, that on average, people spend 303 minutes uh, when considering and researching their next trip, which, of course, takes us to AI, right? That's why we're actually very, very excited about um, AI and its application in the travel space, because actually, it can, it's, um, it's an area where planning is very complex, where expectations are very high and stakes are very high. So with AI, we can actually unlock new ways to search, new, new, uh, allowing people to ask new questions, um, give them new ways to ask those questions, and give them much more satisfying answers. So let's explore some examples of how we do this and how we plan to do this in the near future. So first of all, let's start with how we ask the questions, right? We actually make available to consumers new ways to search. To us with text, of course, but also with voice, with image, with, with Google Lens, and with video. Text, of course, is very, very powerful, right, and continues to be core of how many of us are, are, are you know, exploring the web. But if you think about, again, our space in travel, being able to ask questions with voice can unlock much more open-ended and much, uh, much longer questions, right, than we're willing to type. Similarly, when you can use Lens, or what we call, what we call circle to search, which is basically a capability where you simply uh, circle something on your phone, no matter what application you are using, right? And then you can get uh, research results about this image, can really help when it comes to uh, exploring uh, and getting inspired about things to do or places to visit, right? You see a nice bar when waiting out of Berlin, around Berlin, uh, you take a picture, you actually ask more questions about it, uh, and so on and so forth. Now let's talk about how we're actually using AI to provide more useful and more relevant results. First of all, we're starting to uh, roll out AI-organized results pages. For certain queries, starting with dining and, exploring to and expanding to lodging and other areas soon. You will see, in these cases, a full page experience with relevant results organized uh, for your specific search. So that, that allows you to easily explore content and perspective from across the web, including articles, videos, forums, and more, all in one place, organized by theme, and in an engaging, scrollable format. OK, let me give you an example to make it a little bit more digestible. This is an example for dining, right? Here, you can use AI to offer people uh, new ways to explore open-ended queries, like this one you see in this example, best vegetarian restaurants in San Diego. Instead of hitting people with a wall of, of blue links, we can actually look at, at the myriad vegetarian restaurant, organize those local results by relevant clusters, uh, which are intuitive and helpful to users, such as vegetarian Mexica or vegan bites in this, in this case. The second um, specific innovation that, is that we're going to talk about is that we're able to apply multi-step reasoning for complex queries. 
this actually means that we're getting better and better at those longer questions, right, uh, that you might expect otherwise to take several searches. Like this example you see here, where someone is using um, for a yoga or Pilates studio that has an introductory offer and that is in Boston within walking distance uh, from, their, from their hotel. So no more excuses for not exercising when traveling anymore. But basically the idea is that uh, you can ask all of these questions in one go and you can actually get relevant results. So this can of course be very powerful for the users, but of course also very powerful uh, for, the partner, for the content providers because this is a much easier way uh, for travelers to, exp to discover your content. Let's look again at the traveling example, right? Here I want to book a hotel with a pool and adjoining rooms. Instead of actually asking, doing multiple searches to ask for those questions one by one, or having to, to apply filters, and so on and so forth, I can ask it in one go. So this can, of course, be very powerful from a user perspective, but also from a partner perspective, this allows you to showcase your unique content, and the value proposition of your property, your service, or your brand can be easily discovered. So we're very excited about this as well. So, and the real fun one actually when it comes when you bring all of those together, right? So many ways to ask questions and explore the web, an easy way to organize answers, and then the ability to ask many questions at once. Again, let's use a travel example, right? Here, we're asking Google to plan for me uh, a weekend in Miami for a foodie. It, allow, it, it, it gives me back, and again, an organized daily itinerary with meal ideas, hotels, flights as well. Right? So I can actually get a complete picture of what this uh, plan could look like and gets me going with getting organized. But in addition to that, right, we can have the user can interact with this content. So basically, you can see some results and you can swap out a restaurant recommendation with something else that you may like better. Right? Or you can get a sense of lights and hotels and then when you're ready, you can actually go deeper uh, and make your options uh, and choose your flights and your hotels. And finally, you can export docs, Google Docs, so you can collaborate with others, or you can come back and continue uh, planning uh, you know, from where you left it at. And that's kind of how we think we can make a step, start making a step change in helping people with, with their uh, you know, planning, exploration, and decision making. Uh, finally, again, when it comes to new capabilities to search, you know, you're now getting, starting getting uh, prepared for a trip, in this case, supposedly you're going to San Diego, uh, you're watching a YouTube short or actually any other video on your device, you see something that piques your interest, in this case, the Maritime Museum, uh, you'd simply circle it and then you get Google results about uh, you know, where it is, what it is, and how to basically book tickets. Again, new ways to explore tickets, uh, new ways to drive traffic. So, um, to, 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 with these capabilities, in general, we see uh, consumers search more and more and being more satisfied with the results. We actually see them visit a greater diversity of websites, and we see them clicking more links and spend more time on the destination sites. And now, and all of this actually new, all of this user behavior, we think, can actually drive significant value for Google's partners, right? As they can basically can connect with the users at multi multiple steps of this uh, planning and research experience, right? You can reach customers now in new moments of exploration. You can reach customers with greater in expressed interest, like in this case of the, you know, of the yoga studio or any other activity that somebody may be looking. And you can also, also, of course, reach customers showcasing your unique value proposition when they're closer uh, to making this uh, booking decision. Uh, actually, I uh, also want to make, uh, in the spirit of marketing and distribution, I want to make a plug for um, uh, a talk that a colleague of mine, Julia Stern, is giving later this afternoon, the e-travel stage, which is going to dive on all of those elements a little bit deeper. So please go to her to listen more. Uh, but as far as I am concerned, right, and Google search, uh, I want to wrap up and let you kind of, um, uh, with the three takeaways I want you to take, uh, to take from today. Google search is evolving, right? Gen AI allows us to provide new user experience that are more customized and more relevant to meet travel needs. For our partners, these new experiences provide more chances, right, to reach and interact with customers. And finally, you see, you saw a little bit of the, of the sausage in the making here. So as we continue to enhance, roll out, and build those features, working with all of you and making sure that uh, you get a good experience as partners remains top of mind for us. So thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the day.
Thank you so much, Janis. That was a power briefing to kick off today's ITB marketing and Excellent. distribution track. And Thank you. Well, Janis, you've spent years in shaping AI-driven travel. So when you travel personally, right, is there anything you say has changed in the recent years? Is there something you actually use yourself? Uh, I think many of those products are still in the making, but I think there is a lot of, uh, I suppose, excitement right. uh, and less fear when making those tougher decisions because there is so much more information. So, um, you know, last, uh, last Christmas we went to Sri Lanka with the family mm -hmm. and my wife wanted all sorts of exotic places from boutique hotels to tree houses. So it's much easier to get information about all of those things, get itineraries, get suggestions from others, and then find the places to book and make those decisions. So I think it's exciting to just uh, travel more and do more things that you would do otherwise. Right, that's so, that's so lovely, right? You have just more options powered by AI. Thank you so much, everyone. Please, again, a warm welcome for the Director of Google Travel and Local Partnerships, EMEA at Google, Yanis Nimayakis. Thank you, Thank everyone. You. Thank you, Leah.